Hey guys, on today's show we are talking about self-directed retirement accounts. What they are, what they're good for, plus our personal experience after years of using them. The last thing you want to do is have a good amount of money in a retirement plan and then transfer it over to a new custodian to invest into deals but not have access to deal flow, not even understand how to underwrite deals. We're going to go through that and a lot more things. Check it out right now. Hey guys, today we are talking about self-directed retirement accounts, often called self-directed IRAs is the most uh, common form of it. It's a great tool when used the right way. It's very common in real estate. Um, let's talk a little bit about what it is first, just like what it is, how it can be used. Self-directed IRAs have been around for a long time, but they've been very popular over the past 10 or 15 years. The reason being is because they give you a, many, many more options than most regular retirement accounts that only invest in funds, typically mutual funds, maybe index funds. With a self-directed IRA or retirement account, you can, just like it sounds, direct your own investments. You can buy a piece of real estate, you can do a loan, you can invest in individual stocks, you can do a whole array of things. Yeah, it's an interesting concept because it, it's really prevalent to real estate investors mm -hmm. because there's not that many businesses that you are invested in that there's a few different strategies in order to make money, right? And real estate and real estate's one of them. You could buy properties, you can flip properties, you can buy you can buy rentals, you can lend money. There's a lot of different ways to utilize uh, this self-directed platform. Now, we are talking about self-directed IRAs, but there actually is a, a bunch of different other types of self-directed uh, ways that we're going to, you know, ways to do this as well, you know, self-directed HSAs, you know, there's a lot of different self-directed concepts that, mm -hmm. that are popping up. Now, again, we're not attorneys, we're not, we're not lawyers, we do utilize our own self-directed IRAs, we have investors that yeah. use self-directed IRAs as well, uh, so again, not necessarily recommending a certain custodian, do some research on that, do some research on if you have a qualified transaction and you can legally use yours. We're just kind of here to give you some advice of what types of what types of deals you can use to invest with your self-directed IRAs, and just some tips and tricks kind of For along sure. the way. But it is a really pot. It really is a popular thing, and we actually learned a lot about self-directed IRAs. 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago when we started Hard Money Bankers because it was a way for us to raise capital from private investors that maybe didn't have liquid funds to invest in private notes through us, but they had IRAs or retirement accounts or other vehicles that they're able to convert or transfer into a self-directed IRA and that gave them liquidity into investing deals. For sure. Yeah, it was, it was a big help to us early on when we first started raising capital and then later on we got our own accounts and it, it grew from there. We probably have, I don't know, between clients and our accounts, probably 20 different self-directed IRAs that are in some, you know, some kind of deal somewhere in real estate and loans. So here's a common thing that happens. And we saw a lot of this back in 2008. The stock market had just crashed. People had lost a lot of money and they wanted other options. They wanted to be able to invest in other things that wouldn't take that same kind of hit that, just that they had just experienced. But here's what happened. They roll some money to a self-directed IRA at you know one of the big custodians, Pensco, Equity Trust. Like there's a lot of small ones too. Um, but just know that it's it, like your your Merrill Lynch and Vanguard. They're not doing self-directed. There's a niche custodian industry for these specific kind of accounts. So people would roll their money over, open an account, and say, "Great, I got 300 grand. I want to self-direct my own retirement investing. What do I invest in?" Uh, they didn't have deal flow. They're not. They're not active in lending money. They're not necessarily active in real estate investing. So they found themselves with liquidity and a new account and this great concept, no deals. Yeah, really, really good point because, you know, let's be honest. I know a lot of investors say, hey, well, if I had all this money, I, I could flip properties, I could do this, I could do that if, if I had more private capital. And that's all fine and dandy and for some respects you're right, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's hard to deploy capital over and over and over and over and over. And there's no point of having, you know, like a regular a regular IRA account, or a regular retirement account. It's with a money manager, it's with a financial advisor, and it's in the markets, and they're and, and 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 they're doing it over and over. Exactly. But when you have the active kind of role as like the fund manager mm -hmm. in order to invest it, like Chris said, you need deals. And just because someone's buying a real estate deal and maybe they need money and you to put that money doesn't mean it's a good deal. You need to underwrite the deals. You need to have access to the deals. And these can be all kinds of deals. You can invest in a business. You can invest in a private note. You could buy a property. You could buy a rental property. You could flip a property. Whatever, whatever the case is, there's a lot of qualified, because that's the term the self-directed IRA custodians use, qualified 
uh, transactions that you can use. But just keep in mind, like Chris mentioned earlier, just because, hey, I rolled over 100 grand, now what? You need to educate yourself and make sure you properly put it into a deal. Yeah, I, I would say look into different options of what is, is common. And the, the retirement account custodians are good at providing a lot of education of what you can do with a self-directed IRA. I would say do your homework, line up some options before you move your money over. Um, okay, and then the next thing that happens once you do look at possible deals, what you might do with your money, is that you have to underwrite for yourself. There's not a fund manager who's placing your stuff into mutual funds. Um, the custodian, they're not offering any kind of advice or okay. anything like that that's not their position to do so. So you are making your own investment in underwriting decisions. So there's, if you're doing something like buying a piece of property or, or giving a loan to someone on real estate, you need to know how to properly underwrite that. And if that's not your main business, what you do every day, it's gonna require a lot of education. That's the hardest part that I think a lot of, uh, of self-directed IRA owners run, run into. You know, they're, they're trying to get a higher rate of return. And again, just because there's an investment with the highest rate of return doesn't mean that that necessarily is the safest investment for, for you. It's not, oh cool, I'm just gonna invest in this because I can get a 14% return. And over here in my traditional uh, you know, IRA that this money manager there only spitting out two, three, 4%, right? You need to really compare apples to apples when you're when you're doing this and making sure you have access you know going back to the deal flow because having good deal flow the underwriting makes it a little bit easy because you have a lot of opportunities to choose from so it's just it's just something to think about so let's do a quick re recap obviously the first thing is if you have the ability to you have money in some sort of self I'm sorry some sort of retirement account that you're able to convert and keep in mind some government programs and some other types of um, retirement planning does not allow you to, but if you can and you do qualify, hook up with a custodian, rolled over into a self-directed IRA, then obviously try to be active to try to find deal flow, either through other investors or through other companies. So you have access to, to opportunities, right? And then the next step after that is make sure that you are using common sense and you're actively underwriting these investments because there's no one really gonna be watching your back. It's gonna be up to you to determine if it's a good investment. Yeah. And then one other thing to be aware of that doesn't apply to the rest of the world of retirement account investing is that there are a number of different weird little IRS rules that apply to self-directed transactions that you have to be aware of, such as you're not, I'm just gonna throw out a couple of examples here. There's a few of them, but um, some of the ones that people might not, it might not occur to you, is you can't lend money or invest in the business of an immediate family member. And there's descriptions on who's immediate and who's like one step removed but a lot of people that might not occur to them. It's like, oh, it's my account, I'm gonna lend it to my spouse, I'm gonna lend it to my brother. And there's, uh, they call them, yeah, disqualified transactions, prohibited transactions, something like that that you wouldn't be aware of. Or for example, you can't take your retirement account and invest in your own business. You're like, why not? I don't know, just because IRS yeah. has these rules that they describe as self-dealing that you need to be aware of and not do because you might get yourself into trouble and end up losing money to taxes or whatever. Um, Again, just another thing to be aware of. And we don't want to come off as being uh, pessimistic in any way about self-directed retirement accounts. We're just saying that it can be a great tool. We have retirement, um, self-directed retirement accounts ourselves. We invest in a number of different things. Our clients do as well. They earn good returns. We like uh, the, the you know, feeling of safety and lower risk. But it's just a different world, and there are things to be aware of. Yeah, I mean, the, ba the biggest follow-up of what you just said is it can't personally benefit you personally, right? All the proceeds of a transaction has to go back into the IRA. So if I buy a property and I flip it, and flipping a property in an IRA is doable, but again, you need to understand the rules and know how to properly do it, because it can get confusing. Like what happens if you spend $100,000 on a flip and then a contractor you know, needs a draw? Okay, well, that draw has to come back from the IRA. It's not coming from your personal pocket. Uh, and again, you flip that property, all the proceeds have to go back in, into that. So there's a lot of different strategies uh, related to that. You know, if you have any questions related to this topic or any other to or anything else kind of related to this, certainly reach out to us. Uh, we've worked with a bunch of different custodians kind of over the years, but again, they don't make investment decisions on their behalf. They're just a custodian where you park the money until you need access to it. Yeah, so that, that's important. They hold documents. They're not going to give you any kind of investment advice. They're not going to tell you if you're doing it wrong. They're not going to tell you if you're violating some kind of IRS rule. 
They're just holding documents and moving money around. Exactly. So it's so it's the thing to think about. So, you know, if you are looking to get into real estate or you're currently in, in real estate and you believe that, you know, you have some money and you're interested in learning more and converting that, transferring that into self-directed IRA, definitely do some more research on it. Uh, reach out to some of the custodians. Obviously, you know, we like some of the larger custodians. We feel more comfortable with them controlling controlling money. Uh, you know, on behalf of us, on behalf on behalf of our our clients. So reach out to them, do some research on types of deal flow that you that you can do, do some research on some underwriting, jump online, maybe talk to a, an attorney who specializes in this type of stuff so you understand all the rules of what you can use the money for and what you can't use the money for. But it's a, it's certainly a powerful tool and you know, certainly, certainly recommended it. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Any questions related to this topic, feel free to comment below. Happy to share any personal experiences that we can help with. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Until next time.